Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can be free in your relationship to books and reading. And you can also actually grow more from your books and your reading than you may be doing by now. Um, so I'm going to share with you first the distinction, learning versus understanding. I'm going to expound on that for a bit and help you to see a difference between those two things. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about why I have all these books facing backwards so you can't see the titles. That's intentional. And I'm going to help you to be liberated from that feeling that, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed by having too many books to read. And I'm also going to give you access to ways of reading in which you can actually consume more information in less time. And specifically how that information can actually change you and as a person and who you are. Um, so before I get into it, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Try me out for a little while. I post videos a few times a week. If you don't like it later, then you can take off, but I have a feeling you're going to enjoy what you see, not only in this video, but in the next ones as well. So hit the subscribe and let's get into it. Now, um, learning versus understanding. This is a distinction that I learned in a speed reading course about 10 years ago. Um, and the simple difference is, is that learning is based on difference where understanding is based on sameness. So to learn something, you see something new, something you haven't seen before. Some distinction is created. Something is distinguished as different from everything that you understood before. So suddenly now you have choice. So learning is about the increase of choice and options. You see new possibilities. You know, like to dis when you're learning about animals, my son's learning about animals right now. It's like, is that a horse? Oh, no, that's a donkey. It looks like a horse. There's a sameness so that I can see that you see that. But now that I've showed that's a donkey and this is a horse, now you've learned the difference and now you can distinguish them and now you have choice as to which to call it. And that's like everything in life. The more we learn, the more choices we have. And then the more we can create, right? Um, but understanding, that's based on sameness. When you see the same thing over and over and over again, you come to understand it more deeply. So let's step out of reading for a second. Uh, when you learn to drive a car, in the beginning there's a learning because you see all the differences. This thing turns the car side to side. Uh, this thing makes the car go. This thing makes it stop. There's a learning involved. Which pedal does which gives me choice. But through practice with what you've already learned, but you do it over and over and over again, it starts to become something that you understand. You understand how to turn the car. You understand how to make it go and how to make it stop. But it's through revisiting that same thing over and over again that creates understanding. And so a book, books, reading, uh, you can utilize that for both. For both or either, we could say. You can go into a book with the desire to learn things or you can go into a book with a desire to understand. And the thing that's really um, increased my capacity to grow from books is realizing that that's always happening and I can have a conscious role in that. I can actually choose to be with a book for learning and then I can learn from it. Or I can choose to be a book for understanding and I can understand for it. Why is that the case? It's because my choice about why I'm reading a book actually orients my focus of attention. If I know that I'm there to learn something, then I'm actually subconsciously, or subconsciously and consciously, if I've made the choice, I'm sorting for something new and different. And so a lot of what speed reading is about, when I studied speed reading, it's really oriented towards learning in the sense it's like you can read really quickly if you turn your radar on for what is new and different in this. And you are just, in it. so if you say that my purpose to be in this book, I'm trying, I want to pick a book up to read through, but I don't really need to. My purpose in this book is to find something new. You can actually scan and your unconscious, subconscious mind will say, hey, wake up, pay attention. This is something new and different you haven't seen before. And at that point, you can slow down and you can be more present with it and you can actually start to understand that difference and get more from it. So these two things, they fold into each other, but your focus of attention uh, is, is what makes one more, the, more the, the function that's working at that point than the other. But in the same way, say, I want to be with this book for understanding. And I have found that if my orientation is towards understanding, what happens is I slow down. I don't, to sort for difference happens quicker. So I can learn a lot from a book very quickly. But for me, understanding happens at a very slow rate. And so if I want to understand from a book, I'm reading it slower. And slower than I probably would even at a normal, the more I want to understand, the slower I read. Because what is understanding? Understanding is looking for what's the familiar, being with it, stewing in it, soaking in it, letting your mind drift into imagination and making new associations to make that thing that you've seen even stronger. Like when we drift off and we're imagining about a book, what we're actually doing is we're deepening our understanding because we're taking the image and the idea and the possibility that was presented in that book and we're allowing it to 
cross associate and to create new neural synaptic connections along with other ideas that are already pre existing in our mind. That's called imagination, right? We're combining that. We're deepening our understanding of a concept when we daydream and we imagine and we drift off, contextualizing our life and our circumstances to this concept that was just revealed in this book. And so when I'm looking to understand from book, I'm reading it really as a jumping off point to daydreaming and self reflection and fantasizing and imagining. And then, to, and then to go back into it. So I'm kind of folding everything that I know into this image and making it stronger, just like driving the car over and over again. Versus if I'm looking to learn something, I want to zip through it and just listen for difference. So, what else do I want to say? So I can just say, I throw a few more words at you to distinguish these. I have written down on my post-it here. Learning gives you choice. Learning is about your conscious, conscious awareness. It's about intellectual knowledge. It's about your strategy and your plan. Um, it's about using reason and logic. Um, learning is about advancing your, your actions that you take, the specific, what actions am I going to take? What am I going to do? That's really a, what learning advances. It gives you more choice, therefore more actions you can take and more things you can do. And on the understanding side, I said it's through sameness, it increases your ability and your capacity. It increases your uh, experience, the depth of your experience that you have in the world. Um, and it advances and grows your unconscious relating to the world. So when you, I'm going to say more about that in a second, actually, when we get to that. Um, so before I go into the deeper part of my relationship to reading, which will bring us back to the ideas of understanding as distinct from learning, um, I want to talk a little bit more pragmatics about what it actually looks like and how I read, because that is a created relationship too. I mean, we're taught to subvocalize and read a book front to back when we're, when we're kids, and you're done with the book when you finish the book, you know, all these kinds of just rules and ideas that we take on because that's what reading is. Um, you know, read front read front to back, you know, read left to right. There's all these ideas and we just take them on. And when I took my speed reading course, it just kind of blew the lid off that. Like let go of all of the rules and expectations about re what reading is supposed to look like. Because believing that that's what reading is, is actually what keeps us in the box of reading a certain way. Subvocalizing, I have to subvocalize or I didn't read it. I have to read left to right or I didn't read it. I have to read front to back or I didn't read it. And it's like, these are just fucking ideas actually. Inside this book is a bunch of concepts called words and they're organized in a certain way called sentences and they're in paragraphs and they're in pages and they're numbered and it's like all these things and you have to do it that way. But the idea that you have to do it that way keeps you confined from doing it any way that might actually serve your purpose of either learning or understanding or something else. You might want to get creative inspiration from it that's neither learning nor understanding. And who says that a book can't, I can't just pick up a book and read it to decide what I'm going to paint, right? Or where are we going to go for dinner? I mean, there's no rule that says you can't do that. It might be a bit weird because people don't normally do that, but I'm okay with weird. So some of the things that I've created as my way of reading come from the willingness to let go of the rules about what reading is supposed to look like. Um, case in point, uh, I do audible audio books. I do print books and I do Kindle. I don't have to pick one and that's my only way. I do all three and I do all three in different ways too. So sometimes I'm reading a print book because I just want to get really into it and really be with it and, and, and study it and understand it and I want the pages torn and notes in it and highlighting and pen and all that kind of stuff. And other times I'm reading a print book because I just want to zip through this motherfucker and I don't really, really want to look for, I don't want to spend time with it and the fastest way that I can read a book is to visually skim it or scan it in such a, in, in, in just look for something new or different. I want to learn something from this book but I don't really, really spend that much time with it. Um, and so if that's the case, I'll get the print, just zip, 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 zip through it. Just kind of skim it. But, and then when you start thinking about, well, I can't skim a book. That doesn't mean I've actually read it. Ah, now we've come into contact with one of the deep relationships that you have to reading that's going to be an obstacle to you reading in different ways. And I say this is, this is as if you're having it because most people do. I had it. A lot of people like me had it. And you really learn it in school. It's like you've got to finish the book and then you get your check mark or your A or whatever it is. And the idea that you have to finish a book to be a good boy or a good girl is there limiting you from your relationship to books to being much broader and much more free and liberated, which would give you access to more knowledge and more understanding in less time. Why is that important? I want to mark this out for a minute here too. Why am I interested in getting through some books faster? And by the way, that's not always my goal. Some books I want to go through slower. I force myself to go slow sometimes with books because I want to deepen my understanding. But when I want to learn things, faster is better. 
because I can access more information more quickly and I'm only looking for difference. So to spend a lot of time going through fluff and not learning anything, then I'm making a very small difference in a large amount of time, which is a low level of power. I'm interested in having power in the world and not that power over people. That's simply from the physics background. I know that power is the difference we make in a system divided by the time it takes. And so I want to make a big difference in a small amount of time. And so that means that I want to get, when I want to learn, I want to get a big difference from a book or any difference I can from a book in a small amount of time. And so if that's what I'm looking for, then I want to use a print book and skim it and just see, hey brain, see if there's anything different in this that I haven't seen before. It's like zip, 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 bing, that jumps out, that's new and different. Zip, 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 nothing else, throw the book out, right? Or put it down or give it to somebody. So this idea about like our fear of what we th people think of us if we don't finish a book or what it means about me, it's really important, right? And you might think, oh, it doesn't matter to me, but actually slow down, hold on a second. Do you feel compelled to finish a book? Do you feel like you have to finish books? Are you free to read three pages and then put it back on the shelf? Some people just are, and that's beautiful, and I wasn't, but I am now. But if you're not, then I would challenge you that unless you're willing to put a book down at any point, and, and feel completely free and okay about it and move on to something else, then you probably want to look at that because there's a level of compulsiveness in your reading that's not having you be free to read in different ways. And if you were able to read in different ways, you'd be able to create more impact and value for yourself. Um, I'm just looking at my post over here. So another thing, the pragmatics. So, um, so print, I, I do when I want to go really slow, but I also do when I want to go really fast. But most of the reading outside of that happens for me, initially at least, in audible form. Audio books, I'm a member of Amazon's Audible because I like their format and I like how fast you can read in the audible. You can put it up to like, a, I think even 3x or 4x. Um, so I will listen to, uh, most books I would say in 2x, most people don't realize this, but, they, but like the, your visual reading speed is at probably at least double what you normal talking speed is. And so some people think, oh my God, you listen to 2X, it's like actually, yeah, because yeah, it sounds a little bit funny, but like we actually read faster than we talk anyway. So it's actually reading at the normal reading speed if you speed the audio up. And so I listen to everything at, usually at 2X, but sometimes even 3X or even 4X, because what people don't realize is that we can actually hear a lot faster than the normal talking speed but our brain just isn't ready for it most of the time. The level of presence and attention that we're willing to dedicate to our ears is usually quite low. Like if I'm doing dishes or trying to do something in the kitchen, then sometimes even 2x is a struggle to listen to on audio, but if I, can, if I just sit and be totally present and I set my awareness, if I have my eyes closed and I can put it on 4x and I can bring my attention to it and I'm present and I can actually consume all of it just as well as if I was just with you in a conversation at one time to speak. Uh, another really cool phenomenon that you can play with is if you're having trouble understanding, say, at 2x, but then you put it at 4x and you just let the audio go into your ears for a while and listen to it, even if you're not understanding it, you'll actually ramp up your capacity to hear. And then if you back off from 4x down to 3 or 2, it'll sound slow to you and it'll be really easy to consume, which is an interesting thing to, to watch how your brain actually attenuates to a certain speed and it can shift that can start to give you a felt sense of the change in the rate of your ability to metabolize and consume information. Just noticing going forward and back to two, going upshift and then downshift, and you'll change, your, you'll change your relationship to your capacity to hear and understand if you play with it like that. Um, and so a lot of times I'll go through a book fast in the beginning, and if I think, yeah, this is a good book, this is worth spending time with and being more present, then I'll rewind to the beginning and then go back at a slower rate so I can be more present with it. And again, I'm, I'm attenuating the speed at which I listen based on whether I believe this book is something that can deepen my understanding or whether this book is something I want to deepen my understanding from or whether this book is something that I think I can learn from. Like the more there's there for me, the more juice that's in it, the slower I'm going to go if I want to understand and, and, get, and get more of the bits and pieces out of it. Um, and so, and then sometimes I'm like, man, this book's so good. I want to go back through this in print or forget the audio. I'm going to stop right now and just order the print and then read it and be with it. And so when I buy a print book nowadays, these are all the books that I have, which aren't that many compared to how much I read. Um, but that's because most books I don't have in print. I either am doing audio or I'm doing it on my Kindle, which for me, Kindle's like, I don't know, I just read that at bed or I take it when I go traveling. If I'm going to have a physical book, I actually prefer to have the print version, not the digital version. Because uh, it's just it's kind of the same way of reading and reading with my eyes. There's no real benefit to the Kindle over that other than convenience. And uh, um, so, so yeah. Okay, let me move on. So a bit more about the relationship to reading on the inside. 
which looking at this stuff, like reading faster, not finishing, but that's gonna kick up, it's gonna start to kick up your deep-seated beliefs about reading that are actually confining your capacity to read in different ways and quicker and, and things like that. So um, one of the things I identified when I started looking at my relationship to books was like, okay, I have to finish to be good, uh, you know, not consciously, but subconsciously. Oh, wow, there's this feeling. It's like another thing was like this pile of books that were like the to-do list, the reading list. These are all the books that I have to read that I, because why? Because I said that I would read them to somebody or because I said to myself that I would read them, or maybe I should read these books because then that would mean that I'm successful, or then I, then I would have the knowledge that would make me good at what I do, and then I'd be enough. It's like, wow, all these little inner child fears about not being enough and wanting to be a good person and fear that I'm not gonna be successful are actually the, the, the subconscious structures that are creating this pile of books that I have to read. And it's like, I, I love to read. And now I've got a pile of books that I have to read. I've taken something that I love and I've turned it into this burden of books that, that are like, and what happened is books have gone from something that would serve me to something that I am serving. And even when I pick a book up off that shelf and I'm reading it, what problem is, is now I'm reading it from that state of being, of being in service to a book. It's like, what a bitch. I'm the bitch. And the book's the queen and the king or the king or whatever. It's like, I don't want to be books, books is bitch. I want books to be my bitch, right? Uh, sorry, I don't want to offend anybody with that language, but uh, I want books to serve me. I don't want to serve books, okay? I don't really speak like that ever around a woman, so I apologize. I don't know where that came from. It came from the old the old me, actually. When I was a younger lad, I would have spoken that way. Um, but here we are. I want to serve books, not be... I want to be this... I'm stumbling because I feel bad for how I said that. You know what? This is a great opportunity for me to notice with you in real time how I'm stumbling because I'm actually judging myself for two things. Number one, using that language in, in the sense to where it might hurt somebody because I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm becoming super conscious and super connected to how important it is that the feminine is honored in the world and that word in particular can undermine that purpose and so I feel bad about that. So, but then the secondary piece is now I, then I caught myself judging myself for for stumbling with my apology and my acknowledgement. I wasn't all in, and now I'm all in. And so this is a bit of a tangent, but I feel better now and I'm relaxed. And I'm sharing with you how in the moment I can love myself by being honest and being authentic. The tension that I was experiencing that was having me stumble and even speak faster if you rewind and watch it, was the result of little bits of self-judgment inside for how I showed up in this video and for how I showed up explaining how I was showing up in this video. But now that I've acknowledged it and I'm being authentic, I'm more chilled out again, I'm more present with you, and I'm actually here caring for you, which is why I'm making this video in the first place. So sorry for that tangent, but there's no better way for me to give you a sense of who I am and what I do with clients than for me to actually share it when it's occurring in real time. So back to scheduled programming. Books um, are serve me, I do not serve books. Um, and, and what does that look like? It looks like there's no reading list that I have anymore. I don't keep a pile of books that are the books to read. I don't even have a to-do list. That's a separate conversation. There's probably a video on my YouTube channel about that as well somewhere. But I don't have things that I have to do. Why? Because I don't have to do anything. I don't have any responsibilities. There's nothing that I have to do. That's my philosophical stance. That's my belief. That's my principle. I live from that place. That doesn't mean that I'm not able to respond. Response able the etymological root of responsibility for me is true, but not what it's become, this idea that I fucking owe the universe anything. I don't, I don't. So I don't have to do anything, I don't have to read anything, so the books aren't queuing up, waiting to be read by me while I serve them, no. Nah. If I get a book, it goes on my shelf with all the other books, and guess what, it's a menu, it's a smorgasbord, it's like going to a buffet, it's like I don't have to eat all this food, but I get to choose and I can choose anything I want, so what do I read? I read what I would love to read. And I, would, and I would continue reading it until as long as I love reading it. And when I don't love reading it in that moment, then I stop. And I move through books. I dip in, I dip out. I read sometimes front to back, and I go back to the front and read it again. I read them all different ways because I'm, there, there's no rule that says I have to read anything any particular way. I'm free in my capacity and my relationship to reading. And that's significant for me because I wasn't for a large part of my life. Um, I give books away. You know, sometimes I give this book away that I, re I read a book and I love it and I enjoy it and I might want to read it again and I re give it away because I don't have to keep a book on a shelf. Um, I've, I, when I moved 
Uh, when I left the UK, I gave my entire library away to my friend, James, uh, and, and that felt really good as well. It's like a lot of those books were special to me, boom, gone. Sometimes when I go visit him in Scotland, I see my books on his shelf and I'm like, oh yeah, a little bit of like, oh, they're my old book, but yeah, it's, it's gone now. Um, but why? So I give books away when I think that I don't want to because I need it. I need it. Oh, I need, I gotta, I'm going like to lose something. If I have the fear of losing something by giving a book away, then I give it away because if I keep it, I entrench the fear and I entrench the attachment to the book. So I use the giving of books away as an opportunity to teach myself other than my fear. And that's, so that leads us into why are the books all facing backwards? Um, I intentionally didn't put the spines facing you because number one, I don't want you to be distracted in this video by the content of what I'm reading. Um, I'm happy to share that with you and I'll put a link to my Goodreads and, and I'm pretty good at keeping that up to date so you can check out everything that I'm reading if you want. But I didn't want that to be a distraction in this video, number one. But number two, it's an expression of my not wanting to have a shelf of books behind me in my YouTube videos um, because that to me is a way of saying, hey, look at me, I've got this knowledge and information, therefore you can trust me. And not that there's anything wrong with people showing off the books that they've read, but I know for me, there's a certain part in me that wants to do that because if you saw those book titles, you might think that I have something to say or I've got some knowledge and then you might trust me and then you might work with me or buy from me and then I might feel safe and I might feel good because I've got money in the bank and everything's going to be okay. And so I'm just aware of that and I know that every action I take in service of that fear entrenches that fear and it teaches me that that's going to work and that's going to keep me safe. And so I am systematically acting in opposition of the fear. If my fear wants me to show you the titles, then I'm not going to do it because my actions are not about the results for me. They're about what they create me to be. Who I become from the actions I take is so much more important to me than what the results are of those actions because what do I have other than who I am? Nothing. And so they're facing that way so that I can see them and you can't because I want you to see them. And I'm not going to let you because of what it makes me and who it makes me when I do that. Um, and <laughs> as I say this, I'm now like, whoa, am I just like undermining that whole thing by explaining that to you in the first place? Well, maybe, but uh, probably not because I didn't even think about that until this moment. But anyway, I don't want to get too paradoxical with you here. Let's keep it focused. Um, well, that's why I have them facing backwards. It's why they're stored in my closet, not on a bookshelf behind my, you know, when I'm doing a Zoom call or anything like that. It's really a chance to challenge myself to, here's the last piece, um, to not present books that I read and say, hey, I've got this information, but to actually be the books that I read. You know, one of my clients said in a, a, to me in a coaching session, he said, John, being coached like you is like reading the Tao Te Ching. And that was very uh, rewarding for me to hear because it, that's a book, the Tao Te Ching is a book that I've read numerous times and I've read in multiple translations and I've read multiple books by people that were written about that book. And so I've studied that book. Why have I studied it? Because it's a book that I've wanted to understand reading it slowly, reading it over and over again. I didn't just want to read the book and say, hey, I've learned that, take the box, put it on the shelf so you can see the bind behind me. No, I wanted to understand this book. I wanted to get it into my body. I didn't want just intellectual understanding. I wanted what the Greeks would call gnosis, experiential understanding. I wanted to actually experience the world through the Tao. I wanted to be able to live. I've got a, you can't see it right now, but on my wall, I've got the, the yin yang here, a version of it. I wanted to live in a world in which I could see opposites as integrated. And that's what I've done through being with it and understanding it and expressing it. And I think you probably knew that I read the book, but like at that point, what was um, meaningful for me is that he experienced my being and my coaching and my dialogue with him as the same experience of reading the book. That's being the book. Right? I had a guy came over that was uh, teaching me some gymnastics workout stuff a, w a while back, and he said, man, you're just so zen. It's like, well, fuck, man, I've studied Buddhism, and I've practiced Buddhism, and I've created an understanding of Buddhist principles, and Zen Buddhist is part of that, and it's like, you know, cool, thanks, but that's my goal with books, is not to have you um, uh, know that I've read a book because you've seen the spine on my bookshelf behind me but have you know that I've read a book because I'm being the book, 
So I want to learn things and have choice, and that's one of the reasons that I read books, but at least half the time, or if not more, I'm reading books to deepen my understanding, to become what's in it. I mean, unfortunately, I have met numerous people, I won't say, maybe count on one hand, I've met a handful of people who have written books about topics where when I've met them, it's like, fuck, how, how did you write that book? Like, I, I met a guy on, uh, it's an expert on listening, supposedly by his book, and he fucking wasn't listening in the conversation that I was in with him or that I've seen him in. And it wasn't just me. I've met other people that have met him and be like, he's a shit listener. And I met another guy who had written the book on connection. And it's like, dude, that was a pretty cold encounter when I met you. I didn't, I didn't feel very connected. And not, of course, it's not up to everybody. I could be projecting and stuff like that too. But let's just say that possibly that a person could write a book and they could talk about something. They could have an intellectual understanding, even get published for it. And they might not be somebody that lives it and embodies it. That's probably the case. Whether the people that I met were an accurate expression of that or that's my own projection, who gives a fuck? The reality is it's probably the case, right? And the inverse is probably the case. If you met people that are really fucking Zen, that have never read a book on Zen Buddhism, yeah, of course we have. Um, and so there's, there's being something and there's reading. And those two things don't necessarily go together. And books and reading can be an access point. They can be a means to access an embodied being if you read for understanding, if you sort for sameness, not difference all the time. Learning is still valuable, right? One, you can't look, understand how to drive a car unless you learn first, but it's a first step. You create an intellectual awareness and an understanding, and you might see something new and have a new choice and be like, wow, that's awesome, I have a new choice. And you know what? I really want to understand that. Good. Read it again. And then read it again. And then read it again. Read a different translation. Read interpretations of it. Read it in different ways. Sit and daydream about it. Read it slowly. Take notes. Write about it. Read, read your notes about it. Read what you've written about it. Talk about it. Teach it if you want to understand it. <sighs> I have no idea how long it's been, but it's been a long video. And um, I hope that this served you. And if it did, please leave a comment. Let me know what you saw in this. Um, and if you have any other questions about your relationship to reading, ask. I'd love to make another video expanding on any aspects that you saw and heard in this. Um, and if you want to receive insights like this summarized, because I know I make long videos, but we summarize them into text form and we send them out by email and you can literally, boom, you can just get the nuggets. You can get the, the learnings from it very quickly. If you'd like that, then click the link somewhere around here. Go to my website and sign up, get creating insights by email. Uh, you also get access to a bunch of streaming content for free on my website. Um, and hey, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is John Patrick Morgan. Uh, grateful for you being here. Much love. Bye for now.